Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this mouse German super heavy tank. This is a plastic 15mm scale snap kit by Zvezda, so while it may turn out super, it isn't going to be very heavy. The back of the box has four images of the built kit, usually there are only three, so I guess that bonus one is nice. There's also other bits of information you would expect on one of these boxes, like the parts count and length, those being 18 parts and 10.6 centimeters for this particular kit. Or if you use freedom units, it's a tiny bit over 4 inches, still 18 parts though. You don't lose parts for using backwards measurement systems. Surprising nobody, inside the box we find sprues, two of them. There aren't a whole lot of parts to this kit. Like I just said, there's 18. That part count isn't bad, or even surprising though. It is a small model, it's also a gaming model and a snap kit, so it's intended to be quick and easy to build. Despite that, the detail is pretty good, though to be fair, the mouse is pretty much just a big slab of metal, so there's not a whole lot of stuff on it anyway. What is there, like vents, hatches and vision devices, are all pretty decent. There are little bits of flashing here and there, and these are mostly on the sprue parts rather than the model parts. There are also of course mould lines that are going to need to be cleaned up, but nothing too bad. It shouldn't be an issue to get these parts cleaned up nice and quickly. There's also this bit of paper which talks about Zvezda's game Art of Tactic on one side and the instructions on the other. These are pretty simple to understand and follow, though I did manage to mess it up. So do pay attention to what you are doing, I suppose is the lesson. Ok, build time. I start by gluing the tracks to the central part of the hull. This is pretty simple, neither the tracks or the hull part require any assembly, just a little bit of cleanup. And there are guide pins so that you get the positioning right. The pins are different at either end, which makes it easy to figure out which way the parts go together. Then comes this supporty spiny thingy. This doesn't seem like it has a particular way it should be oriented. As long as it's in the centre of the tank where its mounting holes are, it should be good. Attaching the top of the hull next seemed like it would be a good choice. So I applied a bunch of glue to all of the contact points I could find, and then I put the part into place. There's guide pins at either end for this, and as you might expect, it's easy to do. I was pretty sure this nub on the end shouldn't be there, though there is a chance that it is meant to be there, I trimmed it off anyway. No regerts. The hull sides come next. This is again pretty easy. A little pressure was needed to minimise the gaps, and there's a little bit at the front in particular where pressure was needed. In the end the fit isn't totally perfect, but it is fairly good, and you might be able to do it better yourself than I did. I am probably going to have to do the tiniest amount of filling, though that's fine. I then glue together the fuel drum for the hull rear. This is a simple two part assembly. The fit again wasn't perfect, and because I'm a bit daft I didn't clean up all the sprue gates before I glued it together. To be fair though, I was very tired when I built this. At any rate, this assembly is also going to need a bit of filling. Then, instead of installing that tank, I add this splash guard thing. I'm not sure if it has a better or different name. What I am sure of though, is that it goes into place incredibly easily. I maybe used a little bit too much glue, but it's on and it probably won't come off again. Then I finally installed the fuel drum on the rear of the hull. Unsurprisingly there are guide pins for this and the fit is great, and after many gruelling minutes, well not really gruelling at all, the hull is completed. Like I think I said earlier, nice, quick and easy. Just as I would expect from a Zvezda kit in this scale. We're not yet done here though, it is of course now turret time. I started by drilling out the barrel of the main gun. It's a pretty small gun, so I was a bit hesitant to do this. But fuck it I thought, and I did it anyway. It didn't turn out too bad, and as long as you're careful, and try to get the drilling as centred as possible, it should be ok. At least a bit better than the flat gun barrel end. After this come some framey bits that will hold the gun and front of the turret on. 
I started assembling this on the turret front part, but then I figured it was a better idea just to join the parts together, and then join that assembly to the turret front, on the inside of the turret front. I think here is where I've messed up. Make sure that the central part that will hold the main gun is on the right way. There is a D-shaped keying, and that can be used to determine if it is on the right way. Refer to the instructions just to be sure. Once that assembly is together, it's about as simple as you might imagine to install it onto the turret floor. There are guide pins and all you really have to do is press the parts into place. It is a snap kit after all. You don't have to, but I apply a bunch of glue to make sure that it all stays together. I then glue the gun into the mantlet part, which is very easy. The smaller 75mm, or I think it was a 75mm gun, is connected to the main gun, so you can't really mess it up too much. The final step is to install the gun and mantlet assembly onto the turret. Some of you will immediately see where this has gone wrong. This kind of thing would probably cause rivet countery types to spontaneously combust, so I'm kind of glad that I did it. Because I was tired and not paying attention, sometimes it is quite distracting when streaming your builds as well, I've clearly installed the gun mount inside the turret the wrong way around. And so the gun is also now the wrong way around. I didn't actually notice that at the time, just the big gap next to the mantlet. So I shoved it over to cover the gap. Pretty much as soon as I stopped the stream I realised the mistake and was able to fix it. The parts hadn't quite bonded properly yet, so I was able to rip the gun off. I did have to remove the keying to mount it around the right way, but I did manage. And as you can see, it turned out fine. So maybe this is a good example of why you should pay attention to the instructions and be careful with what you're doing. And maybe don't model while tired. Don't do what Herbert Don't does. And with that probably basic and obvious advice, the 15mm scale plastic mouse by Zvezda is completed. And I do think it's a pretty good little kit. Well, it's not that little, it is a mouse. But to be sure, it is a decent kit. And if I do happen to need more mouses, or mice, in this scale, I would happily buy and build it again. Hopefully without putting the gun on backwards. Obviously this is a gaming piece, and it is a fairly cheap one too, so that's what you should be expecting. If you buy this thinking that you're going to get something hyper detailed, that's really on you. That's not to say that it's bad of course, in fact as I just said, I think it's quite good. There is a good amount of detail, not that the real mouse is much more than a very flat slab sided chunk of metal, but the vents and vision devices and such are there and they do look quite good. Some of the parts will need a little bit of filling, which might upset some people. In my opinion though it's just part of the hobby. Just like in real life, sometimes things just need filling. And it's not something to get all outraged about. Other than a couple of gaps, and my own incompetence, I would say this has gone together rather nicely. Being a relatively simple snap together kit, the assembly was fairly quick and easy. I would say that if I wasn't streaming and easily distractible, when building this kit I could have got it together in minutes. The most time consuming part of the build is cleaning up the mould lines, and that wasn't particularly time consuming at all. It's a simple and fun build, and sometimes that's exactly what the doctor ordered. I mean, I want every build to be fun, otherwise what's the point? What I mean is models aren't always simple, and that's not a bad thing. It is a hobby with a lot of variety in that way. I'm not sure about how I'm going to paint this mouse, and I'm not planning on doing so in the immediate future, but probably kind of soon. I will definitely be doing it different to how my 28mm scale mouse is painted, but there are just so many different schemes out there to choose from, but I suppose I do have plenty of time to ponder. Surely there's going to be somebody who says, But Herbert, those colour schemes never existed! To which I say, shh, who cares? I mean, besides obsessive weirdos. Anyway, that might be enough waffling. If you feel like it, let me know what you think of this kit in the comment section below. If you've built one of these, or any other mouse, or any other model really, why not come over to our Discord server and share some pictures? That would be really cool. There's a link in the description, not only for Discord, but all of my other things as well. 
If you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, and all the other things you do on the internet. And if you're feeling really helpful, why not share this video with your friends or anybody you think might get something out of it. As always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.